how will you handle if we drift apart? Um, she'll kill me. <laughs> not well. The answer is not well. I won't, I won't have a say in that equation because I won't be around. <laughs>Credit is a huge part of being an adult. And while it may seem intimidating, Chime really helps. With their secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card, you can start to build credit with your own money. So start your credit journey with Chime. Sign up takes only two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at chime.com slash WT9. That's chime.com slash WT9. Etsy is my absolute favorite platform to shop for beautifully made and super cool items from independent sellers and artists. New to Etsy? Use the code NEW, N-E-W, for 10% off your first purchase. That's code NEW, maximum discount value of $50. Offer ends June 30th, 2023. See terms at etsy.com slash terms. For home, style, and gifts, shop etsy.com. Etsy has it. Welcome back to Wild Till 9. Hello, Mr. Good. Delight. Uh, thank you. How do I look? Like a, mm, can't spend the first five minutes of the podcast like a delight. Like a delight. Like a delight, like a cutie in a hat. Thank you. I came downstairs and Lauren has this thing where if I'm in a $10,000 suit in, a, in, a, in an outfit that I think I look my best in, mm -hmm. she'll go, oh, that's so nice. But then if I wear sweatpants, even if they're not gray, they don't have to be great. Yeah, they don't even have to be. And a, a hat backwards, like I'm, I'm getting out of eighth grade baseball practice. Lauren's like, I'm gonna get, get in the hat. <laughs> Literally on our second date, I was like, don't come over in jeans. That was also the date that she tried to- um, Okay, we are still in the first five minutes of the podcast when things are advertiser friendly. <laughs> you know what? That's a great time to go throw us a nice like, share us. Leave us a nice comment. I know. We've been getting so many new listeners lately. That's, yeah. That's- Equally exciting as it is scary. Yeah, I know. And I'm like, oh my God. Mm. Well, because I, I feel like when, when we started the podcast, it was like, hey, it's an introduction to Lauren that doesn't have a crayon in her hand. And yes, that was crayon. Literally, I genuinely, my brain glitched trying to make out what word you were trying to say because it, it's crayon. What's well, crayon? You're, uh, it, you're saying raisin, but like, you yeah. know what you're saying is a crazin. Crayon. That's basically what you're saying. Crayon. Um, crayon. Okay. You got cray. Yeah. You got on. On. Crayon. Nope. Nope. You lost it. Cray on. Is it accent a goo over it? You just don't see no, it. No, there's not crayon. Cray yeah, on. Crayon. But if you could think about think about all crayon. the time. Crayon. Think about all the time I save by saying on. crayon. Anyway, so uh <laughs> cranless DIY queen. You thought you even lost another syllable in there somewhere. <laughs> that was less. That was less. <laughs> anyway, and then her boyfriend, who like who knows who that guy was. Right. But now people don't get the intro. No. They just get like right into it. Welcome back. Straight into it. Welcome back to what? Straight into it. Um, there's been uh, one of the, the one of the shares from the last podcast that I've just seen been going a little bit viral is uh, my commentary around sucky sucky yay. Mm, sucky sucky yay. Which is one of my favorite uh, feet to put forward when someone hasn't seen my content in a long time. Well, I just can't wait for like you to be like in a, in a serious interview. <laughs> the, the next time you like, you're releasing something big, you're like today show at 7.30 in the morning, everyone's yeah. got their like morning coffee. Totally. And, and some, you know, fun little millennial producer is like, ask her about the sucky sucky thing. And they're like, so Lauren, talk to us about this. Cause they just assume everything you do oh, is, I, I can't is wait. brand safe. That's yeah. Well, what are you going to tell whoever the replacement for Matt Lauer is? Um, Try me, go, go, go ahead, go ahead. Ask the question. You've had a lot of really intelligent, uh, impactful pieces of content throughout your years yeah. on the internet. Yeah. Um, walk us through a couple of these sayings. Let's start with this. Uh, sucky, sucky. Well, it's actually sucky, sucky, yay. Um, and so if your producer had done their research that you would know that there's a third part to that. And I I just think it's, uh, it's one of those things that, you know, I Y K Y K. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Our, <laughs> our producer right now is telling us that I guess we can sagu to the next topic. We can. Yeah. Let's sagu on over. Yeah. Thanks so, so much for having that, me. That makes no sense if you're new here, but if you're not <laughs> new here, welcome back. Oh my God. I talked about this on Twitter and I think I need to make a TikTok about it. I had another sagu moment. This happens like once a week at this point. Is this and another one of your TikToks where you throw me under the bus, even though- No. Okay. Also, the TikTok that I just made actually made you funnier than your joke was. I, I had, okay, okay, first, First, my new Sagu error, my new Sagu, Sagu error, my Sagu-esque word no, that yeah, I learned. Yeah, okay. Um, that I just want to say, again, not to throw you into the bus, but Jeremy also admitted that he did not know the proper context of this. I was texting someone and 
I don't know what inspired me to Google to, it, there was like something that didn't feel right. Okay. As I was typing air on the side of oh, caution, God. air on the side of caution. I don't know what it was. There was the tiniest, teeniest, tiniest little whisper of like, you know what? You know what? It wasn't even like a group chat where I like think about looking smart. Like when I'm texting mm. your mom, I like really think about like my grammar and punctuation. Because and you're- Using the right, because I'm a delight. Right. Because I'm a delight. And delights can't have bad grammar. But this was in a conversation with Zach, Maggie, and Kelsey where I could say literally anything. I've seen that chat. You do and, say anything. And there's, no, it's a judgment-free zone. And I don't know what it was about that, that one stroke of an extra brain cell that had me Googling. And it's air, E-R-R. On the side of caution, not air as like the woo, air or er, er, er on the side of caution is what it looks this like. This is an ASMR podcast. Yeah, welcome. Ooh. Er on the side of caution is what it, it, it would read in my head. Right. E R R. And okay, I, I don't even know like, how, like where that's from. I'm what? sure there's a reason. Yeah, what, what is what is er on the side of caution? I'm gonna Google it. The latest one that I really have like latched onto and I'm so glad is uh, for all intents and purposes. Not into all intensive purposes. Wait, what's the way to say it? For all intents and purposes. It's not intensive. <laughs> You're welcome. Are we past the five minutes? Do I need to make a TikTok? <laughs> okay, error, E-R-R, be mistaken or incorrect, make a mistake. W the judge had erred in ruling that the evidence was inadmissible. Oh, I've never heard it. He has erred and strayed as many of us have. <gasps> you lost me. Anyway, welcome back to Watson 9. Stop, drop, roll, rate the pod. If you haven't already on Spotify or Apple, I'd love a new rating. I'm just not over this. Air on the side of caution. I know, I know, I, but you figured it. it out. You taught people, now you taught me. Yeah. I've taught you about all intensive purposes. All intents and purposes? Yeah. No, wait, intent. For all intents, intentional, and purposes. I'm intending to do something. In What are you saying? Intent? Shoshana. I don't know. I don't know in what world anyone thinks that I can read any of this text. <laughs> I, there it is. For all intents. I'm going to read yours. In Oh, intense. What was I saying? You were making it sound like it was intense. Like, ooh, that's really intense. No, intense. Intense. Intentional. Intense, yeah. Oh God, we've got to move on. <laughs> You're going to listen to me. I'm about to click off. Oh, this is this is a grammar podcast. Um, no, welcome. this is a juicy podcast. Lauren wanted to do all these like lighthearted questions. And I said, let's get back to the meat and potatoes. The meat and potatoes. Yeah, the meat, meat and, taters. and potatoes. Do they say taters in Canada? Taters, yeah, like a tot. <laughs> Goes to the most fried version of it, like a tot. Yeah, yeah. of course, the tot. Yeah, tater what's tot. Your, what's your favorite form of potato? Uh, there's very few I don't dislike. You know what? Uh, Give me your top three. Let me start with what I don't like. Okay. Any type of potato that's soggy, whether it's mashed potato, whether it's- You the, don't like a mashed potato? I love it. No, 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 soggy. So okay. like, you know how like some people make potatoes in the oven and they're not crispy? Yeah. There's too much just like, like wet. Yeah, okay. I don't want wet potato, I don't want crispy potato. But okay, where does mashed fall into that? Well, mashed is one of the most it's beautiful types. Yeah. Okay. But think about it. You're going to take a potato, put two sticks of butter and mix it up a little bit and add some salt and throw it out there. What's not to love? I thought I didn't know what direction you were going. I wasn't sure we almost had to call off our engagement. No, I, I if we had disagreed about you that- You fuck with the mashed. You think I would have dropped as much as I did on a ring? Yeah, if, if we I didn't see eye to eye on mashed. Yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the biggest piece here is that um, I actually think that a a perfectly done fry- Mm. It's crispy, mm -hmm. the right seasoning, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. hard to outdo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love a scalloped. I think scalloped is slept on. Underrated, low key. Yeah, uh, scalloped potatoes feels like a buffet food to me. Oh, you never had Nana scalloped potatoes. Nana scalloped potatoes. I did But are you, can you kind of see where I'm at? Like every buffet you go to with potatoes, they have scalloped potatoes. I, I feel like the I feel like the buffet go to potato is a mash. They, it's, it and is. it's a vat. It's like, like a vat, and those are usually really good. No one's ever butter. made scalloped potatoes for themselves. That's so wildly untrue. No, that's like a dish. That's like a family dish, just to pass. Oh, kind of thing. oh, oh! I see what you mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, okay. Look at us. Okay. Same fine. page. Fine. 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 Yeah. Fine. For all intents and purposes. For all intents and purposes, and if I were to err on the side of caution, right. I would say. That <laughs> Well, now that we've, um, I think uh, it, all advertisers, I don't know if they're interested in us anymore, but they're not. I can't decide if I lose or gain brain cells when I have moments like this, where I realize at almost age 30, that something that I've been saying and spelling for my entire life has just been wrong. 
Like, do I gain a brain cell because I now know the truth or do I lose a brain cell because I went this far in life without knowing? I, you know, there's like the, the whole or thought of break like, even. well, you know, like you, you don't, you don't ever gain any more brain cells. We're born with all of them. And then we just like slowly drink them away. It, no. Shoshana, can we get a fact check on that? <gasps> I'm pretty sure. No. I think is this like the, is this like the, like eggs? So like your like brain, your eggs? okay, but your brain, yeah, but your brain develops. Are these them, my but, brain eggs? But I'm pretty sure brain cells, you just <laughs> lose. I don't think you ever grow any new ones. What? Can we get a fact check on that? Okay. What? Okay. But yeah, the majority, like we're just getting dumber. I mean, we're getting less capable. I think our potential continues to get this way. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if I like that outlook on my life. Well, okay, but at the same time, they also say that we only like tap into like 1% of them. Right. So it's like, we don't really do much. So what are they all doing though when we're born? But okay, I think our brain could say the same thing about us. Like what the fuck, what are you doing? doing? What are they doing? They're like waiting to be woken up. Wake up! I just feel like, you know, it's not, it's not like our brain's fault that we don't do as much as we could with it. I don't know. I just feel like it should be a team effort. And I feel like I'm pulling my weight and I just feel like my brain could pull a little harder. So you think of, of all <laughs> like of all your organs, your yeah. brain needs to step it up. No, I for think you. it'd be my stomach, to be honest. That's a good question. If you could get one of your organs yeah. to get their shit together, right. which one would it be? Oh, I mean for sure my stomach. Okay. What's your strongest organ? Um I would say. Hmm. Cause I can tell you right now, my, my liver slash kidneys oh, yeah. have been crushing Cockroach it for energy. Me. Yeah. yeah, cockroach energy. My skin's sure. not so bad either. Um, shut up. <laughs> Literally shut your mouth. <laughs> what? Wipes his face with the same towel he wipes his ball sack. When I start Perfect getting zits, skin. Perfect will skin. change. You know when you actually do get zits is after you've had to wear sunscreen on your face. It's literally putting any product on your face. It's so annoying. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Nothing little hmm, keels can't fix. I don't really have any good, whatever my nap organ is to be able to nap, that one's doing well. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think we, I think we solved that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, okay. <laughs> I've actually thought about this before though. If like, if I could trade stomachs with someone else, like would I? And I go back and forth Wait, because- By the way, when- when did this thought come to your mind? I've thought I've thought about this so many times. See, I, I just have like continual stomach problems. I, I kind of wish that we would do a high podcast just so everybody else and me included uh -huh. could get high idea Lauren. You know what high ideas are, right? Yeah, yeah. Ideas when you're high. Yeah. I think your high ideas <laughs> would. I don't know. I just think that like one, it'd be a four and a half hour podcast. <laughs> My problem with being high, um, so I tried this for a video, is that I just didn't talk. Like when Tana last week, when she's drunk and she talks about how she doesn't shut the fuck up. Like there's some drunks who don't shut the fuck up and some drunks who shut the fuck Tana up. Tana was not drunk last week. She was talking about yeah, yeah. Oh, being sorry. drunk. Did I, yeah. did I say Tana was drunk? Well, it's just like, she's in the middle of like 75 hard. Yeah, and like no, no, anyone no. We like were talking that. about how there are drunks who don't shut the fuck up and drunks that shut the fuck up. I'm a high that just shuts the fuck up. Uh, Lauren and <laughs> Tana and I were like, we don't shut the fuck up when we're drunk. Yeah. We can I, talk forever. I, I would say I could, I could chat forever too when I'm drunk, but when I'm high, I just don't say anything. I I'm gone. Could, I'm on a different planet. Okay. I think that we could, I think we can get it out of you. I think it would be slow paced. <laughs> well, comment below if you'd like a high episode. Uh, you might not get it, but. So anyway, circling back though, I've gone, I flip flop back and forth on whether or not I would want to trade stomachs with someone else because then I'd have to roll the dice on, roll the dice on maybe Stop, like. Stop, pause, I, fucking roll the dice. Whosever stomach you get. You think? Yeah, it'll be better than yours. Hmm. But I guess because I know the habits of my stomach, like I know. You'll, I think you could figure out the habits of another stomach after two weeks. Okay, but like, here's the thing. I never shit myself. It seems like a lot of people that we've just like been having this conversation more and more kind of shit themselves a lot. I mean, I'll always remember, and I think I've said this on the podcast, the amount of times that like you within the first year of our relationship was like, yeah, like I feel like half my boyfriends, like have just shit themselves and I just go bring them a pair of clothing. And, but like so many of our friends lately had this question has come up when the last time you shit yourself was, and it's kind of frequent. Kelsey shits herself all the time. She has IBS, but she shits herself all the time. So I'm just saying that my stomach could be worse. I also never throw up. It, well, yeah, right. I like never throw up. And some people just like, like but Remy, for example, gags when she brushes her teeth every single day. Poor Cal. I know. And that's, that's just not for me. That's not for me. That's not the life I yeah, want to lead. We don't have that problem. And so anyway, we're just going to keep on moving right past that joke. <laughs> I just, I just don't, I just don't know. I just don't know. Like, okay. I've, I've, I've learned my quirks and there are some things that I'm grateful for. You're like, pretty quirky, babe. Not shitting myself. 
So Jeremy, um, last week in Mexico learned that the whole like two finger emoji together thing is, is a little chuggy. It's a little cringy now. And he was devastated. I know what all these words mean. So that's a fucking win in my book. <laughs> this podcast is, is like by itself, keeping me young. I would be. Yeah. You know, you're so right. You learn so much. You know, like I'm in, I'm experiencing this podcast in real time. Yeah. 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 It's like, we see our friends. We, mm -hmm. we talk about things. I keep you know, being updated on our engagement party. This is great for us. You know what we should do actually? I think maybe we just do a segment of the podcast every week where I give you the the updates of this past week of planning. D trust me, had you not done that, I was gonna try and find a way to sagu us into that. Right. Just so that I could pretend that I know what's going on. Okay, well sagu, here we go. What is the first thing you do when you wake up? What's the first thing on your to-do list? Uh, get Diggy and Moose. It, uh, no, oh, it's the it's the pup cams. Oh, that's right, it's pup cams. It's open pup cams yeah. and see what pup cams are doing. Yes. And then after that, is it is it checking your credit score? Mm, uh, <laughs> that's on the, that's top five usually. For sure, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so we can cancel that because Chime is here to do that for you. I wish I'd had Chime back in the day to help me out. Uh, being able to be up to date on my credit score was very stressful in life. And I'm pretty sure I didn't even know what a credit score was when I was younger, let alone the knowledge that I needed to actually build one. Credit is a huge part of being an adult. And while it may seem intimidating, Chime really helps. With their secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card, you can start to build credit with your own money. Building credit can be really hard to do when you're first starting out. And that's why I love Chime because they're here to help. Like literally, where was Chime when I moved to America? Kids like, will never know. I had zero credit. When yeah. you when you move from Canada to America, I started with zero or negative credit. And <laughs> and I I I, made, I had negative credit. Mm -hmm. That's how bad it was. Okay, maybe that's, I think maybe that might be that might <laughs> okay, be. Okay, so I, I had a, I had a blank slate yes. of credit to build. Chime reports your payments to credit bureaus to help you build credit over time. They remember seeing an increase of thirty points on average. All of this with no annual fees, large security deposits, or credit checks to apply. So start your credit journey with Chime. Sign up takes only two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at chime.com slash WT9. That's chime.com slash WT9. The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by Stride Bank and a pursuant to a license from Visa USA. Chime checking account, $200 qualifying direct deposit. Required to apply for the secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card. Regular on-time payment history can have a positive impact on your credit score. Impact to score may vary and some user scores may not improve. Out of network ATM with Withdrawal fees may apply except at MoneyPass ATMs in a 7-Eleven or any Allpoint or Visa Plus Alliance ATM. I am fangirling about today's pod sponsor because I am a fan. Let's talk about Etsy. Etsy is my absolute favorite platform to shop for beautifully made and super cool items from independent sellers and artists. It's for real my go-to for almost every gift giving occasion. I've bought custom personalized whiskey decanters for Jeremy one year, uh, custom charcuterie boards, jewelry. This year I bought custom ornaments of all the pups for the ornament exchange that we did with our parents and the list goes on. Etsy sellers have everything from statement pieces like rugs and sofas to daily staples like outerwear and accessories. Shop for jackets, jewelry, furniture, pet accessories, art, and more made for all budgets and any occasion. My newest foray into Etsy has been all about the engagement party and wedding planning and decorating. I'm deciding between a few different welcome party signs and also some cute cake toppers, all from amazing independent artists. And no matter what it is I'm searching for, Etsy is a one-stop shop for anything you could ever need. I also just bought one of those bumper stickers on Etsy that's like, uh, please let me merge or I will cry. So between the custom gifts and decor and my new bumper sticker, I am a certified fan and Etsy connoisseur. New to Etsy? Use the code NEW, N-E-W, for 10% off your first purchase. That's code NEW, maximum discount value of $50. Offer ends June 30th, 2023. See terms at etsy.com slash terms. For home, style, and gifts, shop etsy.com. Etsy has it. Uh, but you want to actually you wanna pop quiz me? See how well I do? Um, oh God. Okay, sure. Yeah, here we go. Uh, what time does the party start at? Whatever time. <laughs> no, 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 no. Give me a number. Give it's, me a number. It's the time it's in my calendar invite that you sent me. Okay. What time is it? 7.30. No. Seven. 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 Yes. What time is last call? 11. No. 10.30. Okay. But it ends at 11. Okay. Very close. 
Um, what time is my hair and makeup coming at? I, fuck, I don't know. 3.30. What time is um, my hair and makeup coming? You're going to wipe your face again with your ball sack towel and roll out the door. Um, you're 0 for 3 so far. This is not going great. Um, but like, I'm so close. These can't be so binary. You're Look, close. You're close. I should get how some- many? How many guests? 50. Good job, babe. That's so good. Uh, that's so good. Um, what are the five food items that are going to be uh, served? Um, I'm not sure what the five items are, uh-huh. but I know okay. that we they're did not this together. vegan, and, yes, that they're they're not vegan. N- and that they're not uh, gluten free. No, why would we do that? That's that's it's our engagement party. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Okay, but no, we went through these together. See if you can get at least one. Chicken. No. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> no, 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 not chicken, not chicken. Um, uh, steak. No, I'm so wildly unimpressed. We went through all of the hold menu on, hold options on, hold on, hold on, together. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Think about like finger foods. French fries. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Next question. You got four more. I don't fucking know. I don't know. I don't know. Margarita pizza. Love that choice. Tuna poke skewers. Love that choice. Um, uh, uh, caprese salad. Caprese, 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 caprese. <laughs> what is it? It's the tomato with the, the mozzarella and the balsamic vinegar on <laughs> top. Caprese? Caprese, caprese. <laughs> you, you now all know what it's like going out to a fucking Italian restaurant with Lauren. Caprese. <laughs> Is it free bread? Um, and then I'm missing one. Oh, and, and burger. Uh, I said steak, steak, beef. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Close, close, close. Um, right. Okay. Those are the five items on the menu. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. We've got we've got drinks. We've got drinks. After us, I'm going to do a whiskey sour. Yep, with an egg white. With an egg white. As yep. all, by the way, all whiskey sours should come naturally and standard with an egg white. Yeah. And I understand like in a, a, a busy bar setting. I was about my, to say that. My bartenders out there who are like, I don't want to fucking crack an egg. Yeah. But there's two things that will make me tip close to 50% of whatever the drink price wow. is. If not, just more. Yeah. If I ask for an espresso martini and I see you go out of the way to actually go get an espresso shot and put it in there. And what about the little beans on top? I hate the beans, but I do appreciate the, but the, the presentation. Yeah, the aesthetic yeah. of it, yeah. The people that like eat, like just chew on those beans and like- Oh yeah, that's, that would be, I would have- Did your mother just not days. love you? Or what, like yeah, what, that's, that's what happened? Yeah. But so is that, uh, you're getting a tip because it's, it's a pain in the ass drink mm-hmm. and I, I appreciate it. And then the whiskey sour, like when I, I see someone or when I ask for it first, and this is my favorite. And whiskey sour, and do, do we do egg white? And they go, ah, I don't, I don't like, I, they gave me that look of like, our, this bar? We don't really do that's that That's not a thing that comes here. Yeah. And they go, find the egg white for you. I go, my You know what though? I bet it's because bartenders prefer their whiskey sours with an egg white because they can appreciate totally. like yeah. the the art in it. I never had um, a proper whiskey sour. I had like like the, that nasty whiskey when sour. We, when we first, we first started, started dating, dating, that was like your thing. Whiskey sour, yeah. It was yeah. Like a whiskey sour kick big like, time Whiskey when we ginger, met. whiskey no, 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 sour. I don't really whiskey ginger, but whiskey sour was my, was my drink of but choice that, when we like, first met. You- for sure manipulated me into thinking that I was getting into a relationship nope. with a whiskey drinker. Nope, nope. You literally just happened to come into my life at the right time when I was whiskey whiskey souring. I think you profiled me and said, I know it'll impress him. Just lock him in. And it did, it worked. Yeah, cause I remember you asked me via text what my drink of choice is and I said whiskey souring. You were really excited about that. Yeah, I mean, like I looked at um, you and I was like, she's gonna be a Moscato kind of person. I can tell. Oh no, 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 we don't Moscato. What? We don't I, Moscato. I'm here. Yeah. I couldn't I couldn't be with someone who Moscatos. We don't Moscato. We don't Moscato. We don't Moscato. By the way, who like who Moscatos? Uh I would say that's the introductory wine <laughs> that people start with. You know what right. I mean? Because it's kind of just like juice. Right. And then once you're like, oh, this is just like sugar. Right. Then you then you make your way over to a Pinot Grigio. No, no, no. Then you make your way over to um uh something like Malibu based. Or Stella Rosa. Oh. Or Stella Rosa. Yeah. Stella Rosa. What is that? Caprese. <laughs> Caprese. <laughs> Caprese. <laughs> Caprese's pizza. Okay, so um, is that is that the end of my pop quiz? But okay, give me. Can I get an update on the engagement party? Where are we at? We are. Because I hear you on calls. Like yeah, yeah. Holding I'm, court. I'm working with an uh, an incredible event planner. She's doing a great job. I'm so impressed. I met her. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. We went to tour the venue. We went together. I met her. And it was great. 
It was all great. And she's got a name. She has one. She can't tell you <laughs> yeah. what it is, but uh, <laughs> it's top secret. Uh, but she is a woman and she does events. And, in she's, and it's, it's going great. And she's hired. It's going great. She's hired. Um, she's hired. I hired the photographer. I hired the photo booth company. I hired, mm -hmm. I have a call with the videographer for okay. tomorrow. Um, <laughs> I'm going to, yeah. Turn it up. Are you kidding? I'm, We're no. only gonna do this once. Let me try it again, let me try it again. I know you've done this no. twice. Who? Uh, hmm. Well, oh, I'm trying to think, do we have a videographer? I think we did. Uh, I can't remember. And it's not like anyone wants to watch that footage. Um, <laughs> I can think of a few people who are interested. <laughs> Actually, yeah, that could be a great reaction video. <laughs> yeah. um, God. Uh, okay, what else? A uh, videographer call is tomorrow. Okay. Um, going to pick up my dress on Friday. It got tailored. Got it. And um, got the alterations done. I'm going to get, um, going to go find some suits tomorrow. Going to go find some suits tomorrow. Yep. Um, like everyone's always- Oh, I named our drinks. You named your drink. The Kentucky Gentleman. The Kentucky Gentleman. You, by the way, you didn't tell, you didn't have a name for me last time we talked about this. Oh yeah. I, I thought of it two seconds later. I just called it the Bride to Be Bubbly. Bride to Be Bubbly? Yeah. BBB, Better Business Bureau. I like that. Bride to Be. Better Business Bureau. Yes. Got it. Okay. Yeah, yes. I like that. Um, yes. <laughs> all right. <laughs> what else am I missing? Oh, by the way, I feel like people like are in the comments are like confused about engagement parties. Yeah, actually I've seen this a lot. So, okay. But like the <laughs> thing is- Let's stigmatize. Is this, no, no, no. But like it, it literally is so regional depending- also, you hear me? I just said to stigmify. I didn't say to stigmatize. I said to stigmify. Honestly, it went right over my head. I wouldn't have even noticed. I well, wouldn't have caught it. it I'm went, sure someone in the comments would have and roasted you for it. Well, so. I'll roast me first. You yeah. don't <laughs> And yes, there is some weed in here, so it'll get dumber and dumber this episode. No, but like this is so regional because like there's bridal parties and like, like sorry, not bridal parties, bride, bridal shower, like a wedding, a wedding. That's later on though, I think. That's like, there's a whole timeline of events. So I think traditionally the engagement party is hosted by one of the families. Okay. And then there is something um, where I'm from called a stag and doe, where I think it's a lot of the time- Stag you're, do, right? St what? Stag do? It's like a hen do? Stag, stag do? Hen do? I thought stag, it was stag and doe. <laughs> Can we look at this? Yeah, thank you so much. Oh What's my God. a hen do? A hen do? Like a chicken hen do? Oh, oh mm. okay. So there's a stag and doe, there's a hen do, there's the bridal shower. You've got your bachelor and bachelorette parties. Yeah, my buddy, uh, two of my buddies, yeah. from, both from India. One's sick, one's not sure. Mm -hmm. They have, it's like dozens of events that they have to hit with family. It's crazy. Leading up to, yeah, and then yeah. during the wedding, rather, it is, in, like, it makes ours seem very simple. Yeah, 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 100%. And so anyways, there's so many bajillion different events that people can do pre-wedding. Right. We're just gonna do an engagement party and then probably bachelor, bachelorette parties and the wedding, right? Yeah. I don't know. There's a bajillion different things depending on what region you're in. Do you combine our bachelor and bachelorette parties? Uh, I can't believe you're the one saying no. All right, great. We won't combine them. <laughs> We can we can circle back on this depending on what you're interested in doing. I think in Mexico City. Okay, you've never been to Mexico City though. I know. Okay. Could be fun. Could be fun. Could be fun. Could be fun. I hadn't been to Miami before my last one. That, that was, was the first time you went to Miami. <laughs> Great idea. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Huh. Mm. Mm. Okay. Thank you, Eleven. Uh, okay. <laughs> Literally heard some guys talking about Eleven uh, in the gym uh, yesterday, and. Um, they, I, I looked at them and I was like, uh-oh, I was like 11. And they were like, oh, 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 oh. I was like, oh my God. Wait, like, what were they like? We're not. Caprese. Caprese. No, they're just gym bros being gym bros. Right, okay. Um, and I think that's it. I think that's it on the engagement party front. I think what's so crazy, especially now that our friends are like moving into engagement and babies and weddings is just like learning the etiquette around all of this. Yeah, it's like- It's so interesting. We talk about like a bunch of rules that are not to be broken that have never really been written down, nor are they standardized or universal. Yeah. It's like, there's a bunch of things that are like, well, this is how it's been done in the past. By whom? We don't know. Right. But this is like, okay, and this is some stuff that's no, like- No, I'm talking more like, like for example, if you say um, like, 
Okay, oh, the plus one thing. The plus okay. one thing is something I feel like that I'm tackling right now. Because like for the most part, a lot of weddings and even like our party, you're paying per person. Right. And so you're intentionally inviting a specific person and the invite doesn't say no plus one, but if it, if it, if it's, okay, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. If you get a plus one, it'll say you get a plus one. Okay. And if you don't get a plus one, it won't say you get a plus one. But does it say there is no plus one or it is it just leave it say, ambiguous? Well, you just leave it, you just leave it as uh, nothing and then hope that the person understands that. Which I, I think it's just a fucking recipe for disaster, but it feels tacky to be like, you do not have a plus one. I think we should maybe reconsider that. Reconsider paying for everyone to have a plus one or reconsider being like, you don't have a plus one. I think a parentheses, this invite is for you. Yeah. Non-transferable. Right. Um, does not include- I texted a few people who I wasn't sure if they would understand. And I said, you don't have a plus one. Do I need to do that? What? Do I need to do that? Maybe. Okay. Maybe we should revisit the list of people. Yeah, we should. Yeah. Now I'm stressed. Yeah, I know. Me too. I know. Okay. I know. But I, I don't want anyone there whether I'm paying for them or not. Yeah. I'd rather pay for certain people not to be there. <laughs> if I don't know you, <laughs> I know. by the way, why don't you just sit in the little, in, little oh. intro entry room and eat your snack. And when we're done, you can go back to your partner. The vibe is so important. Oh yeah, yeah, the vibe is so yeah. important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I think that's like what's exciting about it for me is just that like we get to spend a whole night surrounded by like closest friends, family, people that are happy for you and love you and are just like excited to be there. And it's gonna be like the best night. And I'm so excited. I'm excited too. I'm so excited. I'm just gonna start dropping just like little bombshells just to see if our parents can just go off about something, it'll be fun. Oh my God. Also my entire family, which again is not that many people is meeting Jeremy's mom. And like in my mind, my cousins who I grew up with and are about the same age are still like 16 and 18 year old menaces. And I know that they're not in their grown ass adults and are literally 29 and 31 now or, or 32. Yeah, 29 and 32. But in my mind, they're like, they're like furniture smashing, like, did you, you didn't watch the wild thornberries, right? Oh man, there's a, there's a character in the wild thornberries. Um, the Nickelodeon? Yes. It's more of a Disney guy. Mm, yeah. There were some good ones on Nickelodeon. No, though. there you were really some good ones. Yeah. yeah. But like, uh, maybe we didn't have Nickelodeon for a while. Cause like, I, like there's some shows that everyone's like, oh my God, I love that. And I'm like, yeah. did I not get that? Was that not part no, of our cable Sponge package? Bob. SpongeBob was Nickelodeon. I didn't really watch SpongeBob. Why? I know. Oh, you should have told me this earlier in our relationship. This changes I'll a lot take of it back. things. <laughs> I'm about to go have a night. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I watched it, but like, I, I wouldn't by myself turn on SpongeBob. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, so Donnie in the Wild Thornberries is a fucking nut. He's seen, basically like this. a, yeah, he's yeah. like a feral child. And so in my mind, my cousins are still like that, even though I know they're not, but in my mind they are. So like, when I think about my cousins meeting your mom, it's, it's, it's stress. It's stress, but I know it's gonna be fine. I know it's gonna be fine. They might say some out of pocket stuff, but also but maybe like, your mom will too. Who the, knows? The it's worst, gonna be fun. What do you think? The worst thing that could happen is <laughs> it's not fine, but it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. Like it'll be fine. It's gonna be totally fine. Yeah. It's gonna be fine. Like if the worst thing that happens is one of your cousins says something that is offensive to my yeah. mother, yeah. that's great. Yeah. She probably also wouldn't even bring it up. No. So we won't even know. Also, you have oh. to understand the, the, the level of menace that my mom is used to for men mm, and boys. True. Yeah. Way different, like plain than mm, girls. That's true. Like she's gonna be able to chalk up just like whatever they say. Yeah. Me or one of my friends mm -hmm. has said something worse. That's true. In her presence. Yeah. No, like, the amount right. of times that like we would just be driving, you know, throughout the Rockford streets. I'm up over here just on Spring Creek Road. And one of my like friends would like see me driving, not see that my mom was in the car and just mm -hmm. like, like flip me off or like take his nutsack out of the car and just be like, fuck you, Jeremy. Cause that's what you do to your friends. Of course. And I remember like, As one does. I can remember the last, like I can vividly remember a time when someone like was mooning me also while driving, I'm not sure how that worked out, but they were mooning while driving. Yeah, pre-Tesla, that's texted, impressive. Texting me later on, I was like, was your mom in the car? <laughs> and like, I had her like, just like, I just sent a picture of her face. She was like, oh my God. So like, guys. So my cousins won't pull their bare asses or their nuts, nut sacks out at the engagement party. You don't know that. Well. You don't know that. I, by the way, I wouldn't take that off the, like, the table on their behalf. Let them do that. Okay, okay. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm so relieved that we had uh, Christmas as our first practice run through that because mm -hmm. that was my parents meeting your mom. And then now it's your mom and my parents all in one house again. Yep. And um, my aunt 
her fiance, my cousin, his wife, my other cousin, his girlfriend are all staying in a house like nearby, which is nice because they'll have their own space. And so there's some separation, but still a lot of family all in town for like a week total. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. I can't wait. It's gonna be great. So I said, tick, tick, tick. So it's a little tick, 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 tick. You know what my mom's been doing? She's like, so I heard this thing on a podcast. So I heard this thing on a podcast. And we're like, oh my God, this is your, this is boomer version of, so I saw this thing on TikTok. Your mom is basically like a, a middle-aged white dude in the corporate office. Right. So I heard, so I heard this. Yeah. I heard, so yeah. I heard this on a podcast. Uh-huh. I heard this on a podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, saw was this. I was listening to Dr. Huberman. Yeah, and, literally. And, and, yes, he is, yes, and he's like a board yes, certified, and like yes. she, she'll say the credentials yes. and then the story will follow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got it. Um, not that I, 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 listen, I love getting advice from random bitches on TikTok, you know, who aren't my age, but I also do love getting advice from people who do have some credentials. So unemployed Jeremy, um, the Delta by which I am entertained is getting wider and wider. It's pretty wild. Yeah. 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 Like sometimes I will find myself down a rabbit hole that I'm like, okay, this is very serious. Uh Like, okay. And then sometimes I'll be like, this is. I saw this thing on TikTok level. Yeah. And I- Those I like guys about, at the gym, they were talking about like the- Caprice. Yeah, Caprice. Caprice. Mm-hmm. Um, so I saw this TikTok and it was questions to ask your future spouse before you get married. And Got it was it. like, he, he listed off like 10 rapid fire and they're all like pretty intense. Uh-huh. And so that led me into a deeper foray into questions that we should be asking each other before we get married to make sure that you are the one. Okay. Am I the one? Oh, one of my favorite shows, Are You the One? Oh, got it. Okay, yeah. Another <laughs> really in, informative educational Another series. Another highly educational show. Okay. Where the IQs are also. Are, any, are high. any of these questions, like, are you concerned about it? Do you think there's anyone we haven't talked about before? Uh, no. Okay. Great. Then we should have the same answers and same thoughts. And we should be able to just read to those minds. This is going to be, this is going to be so smooth. All right, start us off with one. It's going to be great. Okay. Uh, first one, uh, why marriage? Why marriage? <laughs> Why mirage? Why marriage? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Me? Go ahead. Me? Yeah. I, uh, why not? Marriage. <laughs> uh, I, I'm a fan of the, like where we're at currently with marriage, which mm-hmm. I think is less um, obligatory than what it has been. Yet also uh, is like, if, if, if anything like COVID kind of like shone a light on it, it's like, can you exist mm-hmm. with someone for yeah. a long time? Knowing that you don't have to, and like I feel like if there's anything like give it the like official pass, mm-hmm. it was like finding people you can exist with. Yeah, because it's not. I don't think it's healthy for anyone to be alone for years upon years upon years totally. and not interface with anybody. Yeah, I just don't, like they're very. Maybe there's somebody out there who that's good for them. I don't know them. That's not really my type. So like mm-hmm. people that I, I think who have like my type of personality would not be their best self by themselves mm-hmm. in perpetuity. Mm-hmm. So it's like I think why marriage? Uh, I really do feel like why not? But also why marriage in, now today? It's because like you choose to do it when you don't have to do it mm-hmm. and your priorities and things you give a fuck most about can happen the best with someone who wants to give a fuck about with them. Once they can have best- uh, uh, Equal fucks given. Equal fucks given by their partner. Yes. That's to me anyway. Yes. What do you think? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I think that I-, I Did I pass? Was that what? good? That was great. That was okay, great. great. That's going to be more eloquent than what I'm about to say. If that's more eloquent, then okay, yeah. we'll see. The praise. The praise. <laughs> I think that for me, I just like have always, I don't know. I like, I like, although I- You can fuck with the mic a little more. That'd be great. Although I can, I I identify as an ambivert, like somewhere in between introvert and extrovert. And I think- Thank you for that. Having someone to coexist with, again, that I can do peacefully and still recharge, but also still have fun and share all the same values and priorities with, again, just like, fuck with the same stuff with as someone is really valuable to me. But I think also just like being able to, if, if there's anything that being financially comfortable has shown me, it's that like having someone to enjoy things with is so incredibly important and is such a priority for me. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Yeah, was- so I think like having um, a best friend that you want to touch butts with. Coexist with. Yeah. Yeah. There are very few people <laughs> when I think about it on this world that I want to touch butts to. Yeah. Very few. I want to go grocery shopping, but I also want to touch your butt. God, I hate the grocery store. Love going to the grocery store. I know you love it. And that's part of the coexist thing. <laughs> Exist. Okay. Do we answer that well enough? Yeah, I think so. I think so too. All right, you start us off with this one. Okay, how do you handle change and the unexpected? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Not fucking 
fucking well. Don't you keep this one up. Not well, not well at all. Um, I'm just a planner. I'm type A. I like to be prepared as possible. And so when something comes as an unexpected change, um, I think it's, my brain feels like it's trying to play catch up for the mm-hmm. like the preparation that I didn't have time to do or didn't have the chance to do. Right. And so I think that can make me overheat. Like my brain, my my poor little brain cells overheat mm-hmm. and get overwhelmed really easily. Yeah. Um but I'm not opposed to change and I think especially being in this career has taught me how to embrace having to find change and not staying. Like I always wonder that if I had just like graduated from university and went and worked like a whatever job in my industry, like would I I have stayed at the same job for like 25 years and then just like retired? Like, because I can definitely get comfortable in things. I don't know. So I, I think being in this career has forced me to learn how to deal with change more often than I would have had to had I had like a traditional job. I think change in the unexpected within a marriage is just like a a lifelong game of survivor. Mm -hmm. That like you're kind of to a degree at some point going to be competing against other people for things, whether it's your job or personal, whatever. Mm -hmm. And depending on how you navigate that together is probably key. But also I don't think it's a big deal that like one person and you can use your imagination isn't (laughs) good at change within the relationship. In fact, I think almost there's a, a, a benefit to that of someone being like, I'm the one who's stressed out and Mm -hmm. I can look to you as the one who probably has an idea versus Mm -hmm. like you both having a strong opinion on an idea and being like, we're going this way. Why would we go that way? But I think there's also pros and cons to, uh, not pros and cons. I think there is a helpful balance or a healthy balance in terms of you being able to have like a positive perspective on it if I'm kind of spiraling. Right. But then I've got a plan. And I think that that pays off in the long run. Eventually, once things start. Wait, wait, wait. So, okay, so I don't have a plan. And you don't got. A, you don't have a plan. Oh, okay. You're just like, yeah, yeah, sucky, sucky, yeah, yeah. Let's do this. Caprese. See, okay. <laughs> hold on, hold on. You think <laughs> that you're more likely to have a plan than I am when it comes to change? I think that I'm more likely to have thought about the habits that will form in the future based on what the change is going to be. Hmm. Not to say that you don't have a plan, but I think that I have a better idea of what the realistic routine might be once we fall into the change. Okay. Okay. Intra- do, it's do an disagree? interesting take. Do you disagree? No, 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 no. Uh, no, I think um, you, I don't know. I, I think you're good at executing on a consistent basis. So maybe that's a plan. Mm. Mm. I feel like <laughs> I'd like to think that there's a this level is the of- only question too. I know. I'd like to think that there's a level of preparation mm-hmm. that you can put yourself through on a day-to-day basis by not being a complete idiot that will allow you to not have to have some grand master plan, but be prepared to just handle change well. Handled. Yes. Yes. I'd like to say that I fall more on that side. Okay. Right. No? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Next question. Okay. One for two. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, How well do you currently handle disagreements with each other? Well, let me tell you, not well. (laughs) (laughs) We've gotten so much better though. Yeah. No, fortunately, like, so I think we disagree probably the least almost out of a lot of our friends. Um, when I think about it, mm-hmm. I just don't think there's like many things. Like, I mean, also it's, it's hard to tell though, because like we don't, we don't give out all of our friends the download every time something happens. Right, but I'm saying like, I feel like I hear more about our friends' problems than I feel like we have problems. Sure. And as a guy, we don't listen that much to what's going on in other people's lives. So if I'm tracking that- Even your own life, you had no idea what five snacks we're having at our engagement party. But you know what's great about it? I'm prepared to eat all of them. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Ding. <laughs> Point is, I just feel like uh, we uh, we have got a lot better at it. Mm-hmm. But also I think that um, your, <laughs> your baseline tolerance for um, conflict is just a lot lower than mine is. My baseline, say it again. Baseline tolerance for conflict. What do you mean? Like you're like, I, I could tell you that I think your idea is stupid mm-hmm. or you could tell me that my idea is stupid mm-hmm. and you come with some just fire reasoning for it. And mm-hmm. I could be like, damn, you're right. You're right. Whereas like that might like rock you a little bit. Like, 
things are more likely to feel like conflict to me. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, I'm definitely more emotional, you know what I mean? So if the delivery of anything that you're saying feels emotional, yeah, I think that it triggers something that is outside of whatever the conflict at hand is. You know, if it's like a mundane task, but the delivery that one of us might deliver it in. <laughs> Or the, or the reception or of said the delivery. delivery that someone might deliver it in maybe feels a little bit mean. Mm. So the vehicle used <laughs> to get the message where it's going? No, but I'm definitely more emotional. I'm just more in tune, I would say, to just like emotions overall. And I think that we've had to learn how to navigate separating that and being aware of that and also making space for that. Right. The other side of this is, is like, if my delivery seems too intentional, mm-hmm. also no good. I feel like you haven't done that in a long time though. Like right. when you started like at the very beginning and you started using like sales mini things on me, like sales sales techniques in conflict. They're, okay, the only beca- like, motherfucker, you just feel, fe- fe- feel felt found sounded me. <laughs> feel felt, feel, feel felt found. No, feel felt sounded. Feel felt found sounded, pounded. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, no, but like, I feel like they only became sales things when I like let you in on them being sales things. Then yeah. you were like, wait, I know what this is. Hold yeah. on. Yeah. And then I just stopped telling you new techniques and then it's been okay. So going back to just gaslight and gaslight and go, baby. Next question. No, I, I, but I feel what you're saying. I, I do. One for three. But we, <laughs> we've had this conversation almost to the point where it's like, I feel like I now err on the side of caution Mm -hmm. with my intents. No, I just like, I'm like, okay, let's not be too polished here or let's not do the thing that leads her to where I want her to go. Let's just say how I feel. Mm -hmm. And if it takes longer to get there, but she doesn't feel like I'm trying to get us to a point, that's actually more productive. Well, cause I think too, and like taking a step back from some of the like past conflicts or like arguments sort of we've had, I think that you are so focused on what the end is going to be that sometimes you can bulldoze through the middle portion, but I- No. (laughs) (laughs) You bulldoze through the middle portion. And then if something in the delivery during the middle portion- That I've already like not given value to. That you've, yeah, not given value to, or have, you know what I mean? Like it's happened too quickly or there, we should have like stopped for a second to like actually address something. Mm -hmm. Like I, I have to, I have to, make the journey to yeah. get to the end. I think you might have a point here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, that's not, yeah, yeah. That might sound a little that's not, your, that's not your worst take. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 I think 1.5 for three. Two. Okay. Two, two, two for three. God. Two for three. Two for three. Is your parents' marriage part of your inspiration to marry? If yes, why? And if not, why is that? I guess one quick question. Which one of my parents' marriages? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll go first since I feel like I have the easy, simple answer okay. is that for sure, like seeing my parents ha- be happily married for, 32 years? When you can't think about what number it is because it's so big. It's very long. That's that's all the answer we need. Yeah, and like my parents are also just like so active. They've traveled so much and they have just like their routines. They have their social life. They have their hobbies and like they've just done everything together. And seeing that is definitely like what has given me like a model ideal of like what I would like. Ever, do everything together. Do everything together. <laughs> Lauren's favorite thing. What are you doing? Um, okay, my turn. Yeah. Um, well, as as I asked earlier, is is my parents' marriage part of inspiration? Uh, I would say that I come from a long line of people who couldn't get it to fuck it together. Mm. So it's like I actually take inspiration from that. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I Not also at think all. that there's uh, the difference between like the intent and the outcome. And so, a, a large part of my upbringing, I feel like, was watching my mom in hindsight, make terrible decisions with men, but also like understanding that the intent was good and the execution, I guess, sucked. When you saw that like unfolding in front of you, did that make you want to be a better man to a wife one day? Yeah. Yeah. And I I remember like thinking in my mind, like this is like the latest stepdad, Mm -hmm. like thinking in my mind, like you are a perfect role model for everything I want to not be. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like when someone has that in their life, they either are like, I want nothing to do with this and I want to be the exact opposite. Yeah. And it makes me want this and to do it better. Yeah. Or it makes them be like, have kind of an avoidance towards it. 
Yeah, no. And my, my inner monologue might've come out a few times. And I think I said that to him uh, as many times as he would listen to. Mm -hmm. But like, I, mean, I felt that way. I'm like, you are all the things yeah. that I don't want to be. Yeah. Keep doing them. Great. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, great example. But like Taking also like, there's like a big piece here where just like you, you only, you've got what you're working with. Like yeah. I, I didn't have the other side of it, but it's not like it was rocket science to understand that is a possibility. Mm -hmm. So I think it's like a bit of like, uh, uh, once you like, grow up and realize adults aren't perfect and they don't have all the answers, like understanding where it all fits in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Three for four. Three for four. Do you want kid? That, that's not what it says. <laughs> Do you want kids? That's what it says. And I guess that doesn't mean the four-legged type. I want kid. Yeah. 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 You know what's so crazy? Even having two dogs now, I, I feel like it is a very simplified version of what it's like to tend to two very different beings needs. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because like Diggy and Moose are so different yeah. and obviously have incredibly different needs and have different appointments and have different like, you know what I mean? Like it's taking Diggy to a vet appointment and taking Moose to his trainer or whatever or daycare. And so it's like an interesting, I feel like step back at like what tending and taking care of two little meatballs is like. Uh, okay. I feel like kids and having kids for parents is like, like you're signing up for like a, a, a streaming subscription that mm -hmm. you can never cancel. Oh yeah, no. And it no. might be really good. It might no. be really entertaining. Yeah. It also might be like, did I really need Peacock number two? Yeah. Maybe not. Maybe not. Right. So like, I think it's a bit of a, like a play the lottery kind of thing. You, you see how it goes. Yeah. Could go really well. Yeah. Could go poorly. I mean, my parents, because I was such a fucking delight, were like, oh my God, we got so lucky. Why would we, why would we try and roll the dice again when we got lucky on the first one? Uh, yeah, I remember your mom <laughs> saying something just like that about you. Except for it was the fucking <laughs> opposite. No, I think they, um, uh, I think you, unlike me, got um, sweeter. Uh, I did. Yeah. yeah I, think uh -huh. so. I think I also, um, I think seeing my aunt raised two boys. Yeah. Again, we were all about the same age and they were like, one's good, right. one's good. Right, yeah. also two boys, a lot. It's a lot, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. Again, so, like, I, I know that not everyone's gonna pick up on the Donnie reference from Wild Thornberries, but like having two of those. Right, I don't want two of those. No. That's a bad streaming subscription. That's a bad streaming I'm gonna cancel yeah. that one. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna send that one back, one's good. refund. One's good. All right, four for five. What if we are not able to have biological children? Well, let me tell you. This thing, it's gonna work like great. Are you pointing to your penis? Yes, it's gonna be great. <laughs> don't, worry, don't worry about me. Also, yeah, you're from a wildly potent family this of- This is true. Yeah. The fact that I made it to my 18th birthday and didn't have a child. Yeah. Congratulations, you beat teen pregnancy. I'm 13 years behind. Yeah. Um, but okay, in this, in this Phyllis, I guess, fake world here, mm -hmm. um, I don't know, what do you think? I mean, I would absolutely adopt. Yeah. I think it'd be different. So I think the question is really this. If we both can't have kids yeah. or if one of us- Oh, that's right. I forgot. There's crazy, there's two, there's there's crazy two options now on science stuff. Right. Yeah. So let's start at this. Let's start at, like, okay. let's say that both of us are sterile. Okay. 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 Uh, the, okay. We're both sterile. Uh -huh. What's your thought? Adopt. What, what are the other options? Not have kids. Oh, 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 right. Just have six dogs, six bull right. yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. What do you want to do? I mean, I guess it would also depend, like just say we tried to have kids for a really, really long time and mm -hmm. it put us at almost 40. You know what I mean? It probably would be a conversation to be like, okay, like what do, what are our priorities right now at right. this age? Right. Okay. So going back to Miss Planner, uh, what is your answer? Um, I think again, dependent on age, adopt. But it, okay. So yes or no, adopt or no? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Okay. Like as an adopted kid, and my mother who's an adopted, like a lot of adopted kids here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not that I, I'm, I'm not like obviously great with and positive around adoption. Mm -hmm. I just like, I would like to do it the old fashioned way. Yeah. I guess probably push comes to shove. I'd, I would probably adopt, mm -hmm. but there's also a small, a small part of me who's like, if both of us weren't able to like reproduce, mm -hmm. that would also be a sign to me like, maybe we're not supposed to. <laughs> Like maybe you shouldn't. Like maybe, we should be able to, like maybe like a dog sanctuary is, is a much better is outcome your calling. for you. Yeah, is you can but, do you can do good in the world, and maybe it is to right. 
Yeah. But maybe then thinking again, if I've actually found that out, I feel like I'm the personality type who's like, great, well now I'm, this is no longer an option. So I'm going to do it this way instead. Mm-hmm. So yeah, on the fence. And then I guess on the other side, uh, if one of us couldn't, mm-hmm. uh, I actually, okay, hot take. I think there, I'd be more likely to adopt if only one of us couldn't have kids versus neither of us being able to have kids. Hmm. Because whether that? it was me or you, yeah. but we wanted kids, yeah. I would want to be able to do it, but I wouldn't want you or me to feel left out of that equation. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I actually think I'd be, I'd be more interested in doing that if one of us couldn't. Right, right. I understand what you're saying because yeah. like, yeah, you would see, like, I think it would be a weird dynamic to raise a kid that only had traits of one of us. One right. half, yeah. Yeah, and I, I've thought about this for all of like three minutes now, so I'm, right. I'm pretty solid on this right. answer. <laughs> um, I'm pretty confident, and if you ask me in 20 years, I'll probably feel the same way. But no, like that, that to me almost feels more, and not that like, if you were like adamant about not wanting it, mm-hmm. that, fine. But my immediate reaction is then like, okay, then let's do this together then. Right. Yeah. I think about some of the um, gay couples that we know that are having kids lately and they, um, when they do artificial insemination or whatever, they just do like two sperm samples, one from both of them and whoever has like the strongest swimmer swimmer yeah. wins. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's not a joke for here. Uh, what else we got? <laughs> How will you handle if we drift apart? Um, she'll kill me. <laughs> not well. The answer is not well. I won't I won't have a say in that equation because I won't be around. <laughs> no, but I do think that there was a time at one point where not that we were drifting apart because it was like an emotional drift apart, but like there was a time in your career where like I barely saw you because you were so busy. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. And I think in that that moment in time, like, I think I just made it very clear to you in like very straightforward communication. Lauren sat me down on the couch and said, this will end now. Yeah, well, it's it's true. Like I just wasn't interested in being in a relationship where I don't get to see that person. Don't worry about it anymore, babe. I'm around. <laughs> a little too around. Don't <laughs> maybe, you worry. Maybe we should get a I'll hobby. <laughs> I'm right here. <laughs> being fun employed is a lot of Jeremy now. <laughs> Isn't that so great? <laughs> we really went zero to a hundred. Isn't that great? It's so great. I know. It's so great. Uh, yeah, no, Lauren would never allow this to happen. This is this doesn't apply to us. I'm just not interested in being in an absent relationship. Yeah, no, yeah. And I don't think you would, you're not interested, nor do I think you like have the ability to function within it. No, I mean, what I just like, like, what's the point? Agreed. Yeah. But also I'm so fucking uh, like uh, locked on, well, when the Adderall shortage is not here, uh, like when Adderall exists, whatever, I can lock onto things and lose sight of others. So mm-hmm. it's like, I think all you need to do is be like, hey, uh, we're done with this. And it jogs my memory mm-hmm. and we're back in it. But like, thank God you jogged my memory. Yeah. 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 100%. Uh, what's your take on vacations and how often would you like to take them? Well, actually, we're both actually- I think we actually see very eye to eye on this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Um, so we love vacation, right? but I think that we both love being home. Like, I think as soon as we land back in LA and also we go back to sleep for the first night after we get home from vacation, we're both like, we love being home. I love my bed. I love LA. I love my car. Like, we just like love the routine and mundaneness of like what our day-to-day life is. And I think both because we have other priorities that are like more business and work related too. Like it feels, it, it's hard to fully relax or like, I feel like we're both capable of relaxing for like a solid couple of days and just like fully enjoying that. And like yeah. being at peace with like doing nothing or doing, you know, whatever it might be we're doing on vacation. But I don't think either of us have the ability to do that for an extended period of time. I feel like this may change when we have kids. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Because right now we have the luxury of r- relaxing mm-hmm. in the place we call home. Right. And that might change when we need to like get the little fucking hellion out of the environment and like put into a mm-hmm. little thing so we can go have some peace and quiet. Mm. But for now, like we both have done a pretty good job of uh, creating an environment where we can relax. Mm-hmm. And like if there was nothing on the agenda for a week and to your point, taking the business and stuff out of it, we can have a great time here. Yeah, that's and I don't true. think we've ever so come true. to the end of a, a vacation, maybe Fiji, 
that we've been like, I wish we had one more day. Yeah. Yeah. I would say Fiji was probably the only one we were like, oh, wish we had like a little more time right. here. I, every other vacation we're like, let's go see our dogs. Yeah. Ready let's to go, go home. home. Yeah. I yeah. want my Pups, bed. Miss the couch. And I was like, I, I don't all that much enjoy um, having to wait for someone to go grab me a beer. I don't mind getting up off the couch <laughs> yeah, and so grabbing it. Yeah. It's like, like that, like, you know, somebody like, like to be like doted mm-hmm. on. Yeah. I'm not like that. I'm just like, ah. I think there's also too, like I, again, having many stomach problems, but just like overall, like eating out for every meal. Lauren is one, uh, not even like actual bad food, one idea of a bad dish away <laughs> from a ruined week. I'm telling you, like there's no one who can give herself Knock stomach ulcers wood. more than you. Okay, I've never had a stomach ulcer. That's really intense. But have you ever been worried that you had one? Uh, No, actually. I don't really know what a stomach ulcer feels slash would be be like? As if that's ever stopped you from thinking you have something. I mean, listen, have I thought that my appendix is bursting? Yes, 100%. (laughs) But I've never been like, ooh, feels like an ulcer today. (laughs) Very, very ulcery. But what I was gonna say is that I do love coming home and just like eating regular food as well too. You know what I mean? Like there's only so many like really massive large breakfasts that you wanna eat in a row for many extended days back to back. Agreed. Great. Also, like bed. Oh, love our bed. Love bed. I love my pillow. We like it's serial killer cold and I love my bed. Yeah. I love my bed. I love our bed. Do you want separate bank accounts or to share all assets? Honestly, whatever is going to be the most legally beneficial tax wise. <laughs> I'm so turned on right now. <laughs> No, but like you get prenups for a reason so that like we don't like join all our bank accounts and then Jeremy breaks up with me and divorces me and takes all my money the next day. I can't do that. But, well, so no. Okay. No, I actually have a call this week to just start talking about the ball rolling with all the with the lawyers mm-hmm. and stuff. Okay. But like w- literally there are so many rules with taxes that I don't, un- that I just don't know and that the professionals will help guide us. And uh, yeah, no, whatever makes more sense tax wise because you've got prenups, I feel like to, you know, make sure things are fair on both sides. Excuse my last one. Next question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I, I think, I mean, the, 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 ar- the argument will come down to who manages those things. The people that you um, like best, the ones Ooh. that I like best, mm-hmm. that will be the real conversation. Yeah, oh God. I have a thought on who's gonna win. Do, do we agree on the division of labor in our house? Uh, you could definitely pick it up a little bit, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Says man who has never put anything in the dishwasher. Listen, I'm not great with the kitchen. I will be honest, but <laughs> I do notice that I'm actually a lot better mm-hmm. at the- I can't wait to hear what you're about to say. Oh, you're going to agree with me. Okay. The replacement of little things around the house. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Like filters, yeah. toilet paper, toiletries. Oh, Jeremy, re- I didn't even know we had a filter in this house until you moved in. Yeah. Like the things that like need monthly or seasonally replaced. Yeah. Would all, if I did not join this relationship, mm-hmm. would all be fire hazards or empty? I'm good at kitchen replacement. I'm good at food replacement, toilet paper and paper towels. Yes. But that's kind of like where it would drop off in terms of like cleaning supplies. I noticed I literally, there was a while that I stopped doing the toilet papers and paper towels just to see if I'm the only one that does it. And they all started to be empty all over the place. And I was like, okay. Oh my God. That's because when you order toilet paper, you have 96 rolls show up from Amazon. So I never think to buy it because you just order it. No, no, I mean like replenish it in the little holders and stuff. Yeah, I definitely do that. I use more toilet paper than you do. Anyway, I've got, you've got like one or two toilet paper events a day. I've got multiple. Are you trying to tell me that my toilet paper events don't matter? <laughs> your, your toilet paper <laughs> events matter. It sounds like you're insulting my TPE here. And I gotta be honest, I'm not, I'm not gonna have it. No, not, you know, your, your TPEs are big and important. Who went around and made <laughs> all of our wet wipes uh-huh. put into containers that keep them moist longer? Those are great. Those are great. So little things like that, I'm, I'm a lot better at. Definitely. It. Yeah. I totally agree. Yeah, I, I feel like I keep the the little things that like, if I just disappeared tomorrow, like if I get hit by a bus tomorrow, mm-hmm. the the amount of things that Lauren would be like, when did we get one of these? <laughs> <laughs> and why is it not working anymore? <laughs> It'd be like a dozen or so. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Um, But beyond that, we actually, going back to like the things that I'm good at are mm-hmm. the things that you're not and vice versa. Mm-hmm. I feel like we have a natural, like, okay, you're going to handle that kind of stuff. And yeah. I'm going to do this stuff. I think if we had a kid, we'd have to revisit. No, 
No, I think we're pretty good. I think that if Moose and Diggy would die, Moose and Diggy would die. If I didn't, if I didn't leave a detailed, they wouldn't die. You could figure it out. Hmm. Uh, I feel attacked. <laughs> uh, by the way, they both listen to me better. So there's that. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Mm-hmm. That's true. Lauren um, uh, got upset the other day when I reprimanded her about walking Diggy. Did not go well. The delivery was not good. The delivery was not good. It certainly wasn't received well. The delivery was not good. The, the, the signature of receipt on that said, fuck you. The delivery receipt said, I will not accept this. Yeah. Try right again. Mm-hmm. Despite the like information well, being good. Hmm. See what I mean though? Like the information. <laughs> the end it's, result. It's, I think one time in, in a, um, in an argument, the analogy that I used was that even if there's a nugget of gold of information that you're trying to deliver, but you wrap it in shit, <laughs> it doesn't make it smell mm. better. And it doesn't make the actual nugget of gold nicer because it's still covered in shit. I don't, I don't think I remember that. <laughs> that doesn't that ring a bell. Um, but no, like we, I think we're pretty good with dividing things, but also with kids and everything too. I think there's going to be a level of like what, like bandwidth schedule. Like yeah, we'll yeah, it's, all, it's all about bandwidth yeah. for sure too. It's like, if I have to be the one that has to step in and do arts and crafts with the kids. No one wants that. No, nobody wants, like no that's wants not that. great for anybody. That's not one. Well, yeah, that could be good, good content though. Could be good content. Could be good content. And if this thing keeps up, I might be a daily vlogger by the time it's all over. So oh, could be fun. I put that the freedom that you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's fun. <laughs> oh God, next question. Oh, how are we doing? Are we still are we still planning on getting married after this? Um, yeah, there's no surprises here. <laughs> um, are you committed to counseling if and when we need it? Um, well, this is a great time to remind everybody that this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, <laughs> and the coupon code will always be WT9. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Because I'll never need it. Next, uh, oh, <laughs> there would be nothing more. Oh, I fucking can't wait to hear this. Oh my god, like. I I would be scared. I would be scared for everyone in the room if we were doing therapy and the therapist just fully took my side. Um. Yeah. In that magical world. <laughs> yeah. Like I'd be sitting there being like, I guess I'll come up with like a, a fictional tale now. <laughs> uh, no. I. You, okay. But you think? Okay. I genuinely think that I handle um, informed criticism quite well. Informed criticism. <laughs> that's how I fucking asterisk that yeah, one. Yeah, I know, seriously. Um, <laughs> so, somehow that's gotta come back to like, so my criticism is never informed? I can hear it now. Yes, comma, but mm. I think Couldn't that just leave it there. you <laughs> doubt the intelligence of a lot of people. Oh, I'm, I'm pretty confident on that actually. Yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, as long as you're confident in saying it. <laughs> yeah. But I think that if you didn't respect the person, you wouldn't, consider them to be an informed individual. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. I think we nailed that. Like if we did therapy, you'd have to pick the therapist. Oh, uh, we'd have to agree on the therapist. Sure. Cause I, I wouldn't want it to be like someone that, like if you didn't like them, mm-hmm. I wouldn't do it. Okay, good. Yeah. Good. But you know, I think, I think therapy is great. Therapy I think has been very helpful for me in the past. But therapy has been helpful for me in the past too. Yeah, yeah, for, yeah. For both couple and individual. And I think that having a non-biased third party can be so incredibly important for some couples. Agreed. Agreed. Also like if any couple that I think says no to that, mm-hmm. You, I, like that is a problem. That's a problem, hundred percent. Like if you, if someone would be like, no, I'm not, I'm not seeking help for this, right. especially when it would be an option if you, you know, had the financial means for it, et cetera, and you weren't willing to put in the work, that would be a major red flag. Well, now everyone has the financial means to do it with better help. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question. How can we improve our communication? Um, it's not wrapping your nuggets of gold in shit. Mm, I feel like that's a great place to start. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, um, <laughs> communication styles, like there should be like a communicate, like, you know, like there's like the love, love languages. languages yeah. There should be communication languages. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. the fact of the matter is, I think some of the best, like the best couples probably mm-hmm. aren't all like, uh, I think the you best know, couples often don't um, have the same. I was just about to say that. I think that like, if you had to argue with you, you would want to kill you. And I think like, same thing, if I- Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Jeremy's like, wait, but if I love myself and I have to argue with myself, but I love myself, like Real where quick, does that leave? Who do you think would win, me or him? <laughs> no. Uh, but it's true, yeah. like, I think that, I think that like between the two of us, 
there are strengths and weaknesses mm, that so get us over the finish <laughs> <laughs> that get us over the finish line though eventually because not because of one person. Well, we also some couples uh, raise your hand at home if you're in a relationship where you're two fights away at all times from breaking up. Oh yeah, yeah, that's tough. not one fight away, two fights away. Yeah, and if that's you. <laughs> Better help. No, it's just like that's that is an issue, yeah. right? We I've never felt like we are two fights away from breaking up. No, and that I think is a a great litmus test mm -hmm. <laughs> for anyone who's like, well, like we like have some issues. Like if, at any point in time, if like you're that close, like oh, things are bad. Mm -hmm. um, so there's that, but also like how can we improve our communication? I think there's a actually there is. I, so I listened to this kind of podcast. Uh, oh my God, you're my mother. <laughs> about how this person came in and like di basically like watched the, their podcast and diagnosed oh, interesting. their <gasps> community. It was on- um, it was Oh on, my God. It was on Nearlyweds. Yeah. Yeah. And like they came in, like she came in like and like diagnosed, not only their communication styles, but their energy <gasps> and like things that like basically they were both good at. Yeah. And it wasn't about how can we improve our communication. It was, what are the things that your partner is better at than you? Interesting. That you should try and incorporate and vice versa. Oh my God, can we have that person? Can we find um, them? Probably. Oh my yeah. God, that's so interesting. I would love that. Yeah, I don't, so I just like difficult to think about the things that you're better at than I, that I should be mm -hmm. better at. But uh, no, actually, I think there's actually a, a longer list of the things that you're better at that I would be much better off Getting good at. Put your, <laughs> I was put like, your fucking look I was like, in your where's face. this going? No. Where's this going? No, I think it's a longer <laughs> list, but I think the things that I uh, exceed or, or do a little bit better at are, uh, I think, more outside your comfort zone. TSJ, tech support, Jeremy. I don't know if that applies to this, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, what 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 do you think I do well when it comes to communication? I, th hmm. I'm just kidding. Hmm. Um, I think- like This was not a curveball. Communication wise, you are- Yeah, don't be, so, don't, don't be too quick with this. <laughs> <laughs> Take your time. <laughs> um, I, you know what? I think one of the number one things for you is that you are willing. I think that's one of the number one things. Cause I just think of willing and capable. Like, I know that makes it seem like the bar's on the fucking ground for other men and their communication, but it truly is. You know what I mean? So I think you being emotionally mature enough to even address that there is a problem or being emotionally mature enough to address just like overall conflict, I think is something that you are really great and upfront about and honest. Thank you. Is that as much as a strength on my part or has it been a consistent weakness in your past? Um, I think both. I think I think both. Okay. Because I, I think that you are, oh my God. Oh. Diggy seizure medicine if time. If your dog takes seizure, man's at 10 p.m., yep. it's time. Also a great reminder for birth control for anyone who needs that as well. <laughs> that does include changing out your Nuvering, Lauren. Woo, <laughs> we are definitely a few weeks overdue for that. Come back to that kid thing. Um, um, no, but I, I think that you are um, years beyond the emotional maturity of most 31 year olds. Oh, couldn't agree more. <laughs> <laughs> well what said. am I good at? Uh, you're, you're great at not being able to function without expressing your feelings. Oh yeah, yeah. There's no hiding. There's, if there's, if there's a conflict, it, it needs to come out almost immediately. Like, it's it's like hives take over your body yeah. the, the moment that like something happens. And and I say that in the sense of like, it's such a very genuine and natural response. Mm -hmm. But like I've, I've dated me before mm -hmm. and we wanted to kill each other. Yeah. Cause like she would take a moment uh, that I pissed her off or it said something defensive or, you know, whatever else, which like, as you can imagine, happened once every other season or so. And she would withhold that until like one drink too many and then or, or something else that's like yeah. stupid or whatever. And it's like, uh, you know what? I just think it's funny. And it's like, oh, you just pulled that out of nowhere. Right, right, right. And it, it puts- like that's been, that's been, you've been dwelling on that. Right. But also it puts you almost on your, like, I'm now ready to come with my shit that, that had nothing to do with this yeah. situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which- That's isn't, healthy. Isn't healthy. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I feel good about that. I feel good about that. 11 out of 10. How do you feel after answering these questions? Ooh, I feel a little snacky. <laughs> I've- I think it might be the weed, but I, I feel, feel a little snacky too. I didn't have any weed, but I still feel a little snacky. I mean, uh, call me crazy, but I think the most 
healthy part about this whole thing is that we can have these conversations, mm -hmm. have these questions, mm -hmm. disagree about some things, mm -hmm. um, and we'll work on you getting to the right answers. We will. Mm -hmm. uh, but like, I think we can like joke about this shit, but also be serious at the same time mm -hmm. and get something out of it and it'd be productive and dare I say, enjoy the conversation. Yeah, no, totally. I yeah. feel like when you have this conversation and come out of it, not upset or have yeah. any kind of emotional hangover, um, I think that is strong communication with your partner. I don't, it's not about having the perfect relationship. It's about having the relationship that's perfect for you. Damn. He said, I'm going to steal a quote off Pinterest. That, did, I, did I get through that? He said, I'm going to put that on a mug for you. Bitch. It's not about having the perfect. Yeah, it's, it's much, but yeah. Um, yeah. That's tough. That's tough. That's um, tough. Our guest next week is fucking hilarious. <laughs> I'm so excited. This is one of my favorite comedians of all time. He's funny. And I'm so excited. He's very funny. I'm very so funny. excited. Um, uh, we won't give it away just in case he cancels on us, uh, but it's a he. The only hint you're gonna get, and I'm gonna sign off it immediately after this. Lafia, it was good talking to you. Good